Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Uh, my name is Dan Murphy. I'm from CNBC International. And over the next hour, uh, we are going to be unpacking Saudi Arabia's tourism strategy with an excellent panel that we have lined up for you. But before we get our proceedings underway this afternoon, I would like to warmly welcome all of you and also introduce to the, straight, to the stage Fahad Hamadadeen, who is the CEO of the Saudi Tourism Authority, who is going to walk us through his keynote address this afternoon. So please make him feel welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's, um, it's beautiful to see everyone reconnecting. Great theme for a great sector that is recovering and, and beyond. Last time I was on this stage, I remember talking about Saudi and its vision, Saudi and its ambition. I gave you promises that we will be committed, that we will be through partners. I gave you promises that we will attract new leading brands and promises that we will do things right, that we will be sustainable. So I gave you lots of promises. In the business world, they say, the best indicator for future, pro uh, for future performance is past performance. So I am very happy and proud to be standing, you, uh, standing in front of you today to say what we promised we delivered on and what we claimed actually worked. And the big thanks goes to our partners. We have managed to attract top leading brands. We have managed to invest and to commit to sustainability measures to contribute regionally, globally, and allow me, I'll take you through some of the numbers. But what I want to say is that what Saudi Arabia is doing is working, and I'll tell you why. Last year was a, was a remarkable year for us. We hit record high domestic visits. We exceeded total 62 million visits. And more importantly, we funded over 8.4 new billion projects from the TDF, the Tourism Fund alone. I know my, following, my, uh, my speech will be followed by a panel by my fellow colleagues heading the Jaeger projects, and they will tell you all about it. But what we have witnessed in the last year is nothing but remarkable. We've also committed to 30% of our total land to be reserves. And we are committing to unwilding, to rewilding 21 species, including the, the uh, Arabian leopard. We received global awards on creativity. We, were, we received the top-notch destination in managing recovery by the world travel market. Thank you, Reid. But we also were ranked amongst the top and top three and the top five best response countries to pandemic by The Economist and by many other global indices. So, what is it that we believe made this happen? It is the absolute alignment between vision, between leadership, Vision, leadership, resources, and talent. Allow me to talk about the talent a bit. The talent that is creating a new pulsating home of Arabia. A talent that created a new offering from Saudi, the, the lifestyle offering that we saw in Riyadh season last year. Riyadh season that received over 15 million 
visitor is now repeated in Jeddah that started a few days back and will continue for 60 days. Jeddah season, in its first three days, received 200,000 visitors. This is a new lifestyle offering from a new pulsating Saudi led by the value of creativity and talent of Saudi. But Saudi is not just a new destination and the largest new destination opening up. It's incomparable. It's incomparable in its diversity, its rich culture, its true Arabian hospitality that is innate in its people, its archaeological sites and history registered uh, and historical sites registered in UNESCO, and a thousand two miles of coral reefs uh, that are second to none. It's on us to unpack and, and make this accessible and available to our world travelers. We like to believe that this success to date has taken us to a certain point. And let me tell you where we are today. Last year, we ended with 72% recovery versus pre-pandemic. That 72% is outperforming the global average, outperforming the regional average. The first quarter of this year, we have witnessed a growth of over 130% versus pre-pandemic. And we believe that this will continue to grow. This year for us, we expect to take our target of visitors from 62 million visits to over 70 million visits. And we break another record. Breaking records is one thing. Growing, staying true, staying, staying authentic, and staying committed to our partners is what we commit to. And I think to the audience of ATM, I would like to first start by thanking the partners that have joined the journey. Partners like IHG, like the Hilton, Marriott, Accor, all those that have uh, joined us to date and started riping the benefits. Not only hospitality, but airlines too. Some people ask me, are we competing with Dubai? I say absolutely not. The global competition is not at a country level. The global competition is a regional play. Pre-pandemic, the largest and the fastest growing region was Asia. We believe Arabia's time has come. And our contribution only makes it better for the total region. So our success is as important as the success of our neighbors in Dubai, in, in Jordan, in Egypt. Arabia has a lot to offer to world curious travelers. So I can see that also at partnership level, seeing Saudi partnering with Etihad Airlines, seeing SDA partnering with Emirates Airlines. This is the greater good for all. I will see that in collaboration on the Red Sea and we will all benefit from this collective growth of our success. My message to those that haven't joined is be curious, explore, engage, and my final word is what ATM is saying, reconnect. So thank you all for listening, and I'm sure that my fellow colleagues will have more to say. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's continue the conversation and I would like to welcome our panel to join the stage so that we can get our focus conversation underway. So please help me in welcoming Fawaz Faruqi, the Managing Director of Crew Saudi, Majed al Nafair is CEO at Sira Group Holding, and of course, Kafram Ibrahim Koshi is CEO at Saudi Air, all joining us on the stage. And thank you, Fahad, for that uh, very insightful keynote presentation as well. When I think about the investment that's being made in tourism, 
and travel in Saudi Arabia. It's quite extraordinary. It's transforming this economy. It's transforming this society. And when you look at some of the numbers here, I'm, I'm very impressed initially. Tourism now contributes 5.3% to Saudi Arabia's GDP. That number is growing. By the year 2030, it's expected to double and hit 10%. It's extraordinary. It's creating economic diversification, and it's creating jobs for millions of young Saudis. So we're going to talk about some of those opportunities and, of course, what each of your businesses are doing in this space. So my first question is, with regards to what we're seeing out of the pandemic recovery, what are some of the trends that you're seeing emerge within your businesses? And how are you investing to take advantage of this brand new tourism push in Saudi Arabia? Captain, would you like to start? I think when you, when you think about what's really happening, taking place in Saudi Arabia, um, it's a change. It's, it's changed in, in a way that uh, it's a seamless entry to the kingdom. Uh, there's new resorts, new infrastructure, new events, uh, whether it's sporting events, uh, cultural, uh, entertainment, uh, the seasons, which are uh, just uh, mentioned. So, so much has changed. And I think when we look at it from the airline's perspective, Saudi Arabian Airlines has uh, positioned itself to actually contribute as the wings of this, uh, of this, of this vision of uh, contributing to the economy of Saudi Arabia, of bringing people to the kingdom to see what they have not been able to explore previously. And I think it's, it's so much that has changed. So definitely there's the religious travel. Definitely we have uh, changes in the demographic as well, but it's, it's all coming together in a way that we, we're uh, very excited, very excited about this change there. Bawaz, what are some of the trends that you're seeing? I think the name of the game here is being dynamic and being agile to the needs of the industry. And here we see that there is research, there is research coming on every day about, and then we have new uh, 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 variants of COVID coming in. So I think the most important thing is being agile and have a successful public-private partnership between the government, the private sector to respond to the needs of the, of the private sector while protecting the public. And I think we in Saudi Arabia, especially when it comes to cruising, we were at the forefront of that. While the rest of the world was keeping the cruises as far as possible from their shores, we started cruising first time in Saudi in 2020. And we were one of the first countries to launch cruising in 2020. And we developed one of the first uh, COVID protocols for cruising uh, with Royal Caribbean. So I think the name of the game is being agile and being receptive to the needs of the customers and to the industry. Majed? Yes. You know, I can start by, uh, you know, I can say I like the ATM slogan that we reconnect. We never stop. We start with this, okay? People will never stop to move and travel from location to location. Uh, we got advantage from the pandemic that we could maintain and focus or more focus and see what we should do in the coming seasons, okay? We, we focus on our technology, we upgrade it. We could have enough time to communicate with the SDA. I can say it's point of Mr. Bad. Even we should not come with him because he said everything nice about what happened in Saudi Arabia. Seriously, we are happy to come at this time with this booming and high speed leading by Ministry of Tourism or Authority of Entertainment, or STA, or all the regulators in Saudi Arabia aligning with, the, aligning with the vision of 2030, we are happy to say we are a part of this ecosystem to come with that product can attract everybody to come and plan to Saudi Arabia. And we can see that starting from last 18 months or two years, our numbers in inbound become too high, or domestic it become very good. We, we discover a lot of great opportunity inside our country. I'm, I'm so sorry to say we, 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 we didn't focus before. We could get a good you know, opportunity in the last two years, and the plan for future is, uh, is good, and we can I can say that last five months, starting from uh, you know maybe uh, in December after the you know after we start move up to now, the result is above our expectation too high. 
I was really impressed with the numbers that Fahad was explaining here. He described it as the new pulsating Saudi. Record high domestic visits, 62 million visits and targeting 70 million visits this year with the help of $8.4 billion in new project financing. So the money is moving in the right direction. What I wanted to do now is maybe just focus in on your specific businesses. And, and Captain Koshi, first to you, how is the airline actually performing in this environment and where are you yes. seeing demand coming from? So um, in, in what's been taking place, uh, in, in, let me talk, start with the domestic first. So we've seen um, our recovery on the domestic market quite substantial. In, in Q1, we've uh, basically exceeded, last year's not really the benchmark, but 75% higher, but with 5.1 million passengers traveling uh, on Saudi airline alone uh, during the Q1, we're fully recovered. We're fully recovered on the domestic. When we combine it with what's happening international, we're 83% recovered uh, from uh, you know, pre-pandemic levels. Now, what that really means is we have new demands coming because of the tourism projects, people actually coming to visit uh, Saudi Arabia that have not previously come. And so when I look at uh, international, it is picking up quite rapidly, better than our pre previous projections and also better than uh, what the industry projections were. So uh, I, I'm looking at just very recently uh, the March and April numbers our international demand is growing faster than actually anticipated. And uh, we're, we're quite happy to see that change. Uh, it's, um, it's a positive impact. I think um, Mr. Fahati mentioned about the, uh, the Jeddah season. We're seeing very heavy demand coming into Jeddah. And it's not just domestic from different parts of Saudi Arabia, our domestic network of uh, 29 cities. No, it's international demand coming into Jeddah. So it's changed there. If I can also just uh, briefly touch on some of the points the events that, that were held, whether it's the Formula One, the Formula E, uh, we look at uh, the Dakar rally, all of these things are driving different international demand to visit the kingdom. Uh, so it has changed substantially, and uh, I think Saudi has been positioned quite well to, to meet that demand. Let's just talk about some of the other issues facing the aviation market. Of course, the soaring cost of fuel at the moment must be a key concern that might be keeping you up at night. Um, we have airlines in Nigeria that are actually being grounded at the moment, perhaps not for too long, but grounded at the moment as a result of the price of fuel. Um, if that translates into higher ticket prices for your customers, could that be a barrier to growth moving forward? And how are you weighing the soaring cost of fuel at Saudi when, now? When we, it's not just really the cost of fuel. I think inflation is an issue that's happening worldwide. So it's not just the fuel. Uh, people are definitely going to be affected, but, but it looks like even with higher costs, even with higher costs, we don't see the, the uh, discretionary portion affecting our, our travel is still picking up. And like I said, it's even picking up faster than projected. So we have not seen that yet. Uh, yes, ticket prices have increased possibly in, in some areas, but it's not, it's not uh, uh, hindering travel, uh, particularly to Saudi Arabia. And um, we, we see that demand coming in. We see the bookings coming in even forward. And you also said that you've been investing in the product, investing in the network as well. Um, one thing you've mentioned before is that you'd like to return to profitability by 2024, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. Will higher fuel prices perhaps delay that return to profitability timeline? Saudi Arabian Airlines is going through a major transformation. So uh, it's the operational excellence, the digital transformation, profitability is, is uh, you know, pre-pandemic we are going to beat those targets that we even announced uh, previously. So the transformation is actually allowing us uh, to, uh, to exceed the expectations. I think we'll be there much sooner than 2024. How much sooner? Could be this year, could be early next year. Okay, um, just finally as well, what we've also heard is that there's a new full service carrier yes. coming to Saudi Arabia. Yes. Not too many details out there mm -hmm. about it right now, but tell me how that is going to fit into the yeah. overall value of uh, Saudi, uh, do you see it as a, a competitor or a complement mm -hmm. to your current offering? Saudi Arabia is a big country. And uh, when we look at the size of the, the growth, which is actually uh, projected, uh, 330 million uh, airport users by 2030, when we talk about 100 million visits uh, by, by 2030, it's a very large jump uh, from where we are today. So when I say, uh, or when we say about a, a new uh, full-service carrier coming into Riyadh, 
I think the country is big enough. I think it gives uh, focus objectives. There will be different clientele, uh, very likely Saudi focusing on a Jidda hub with a leisure, religious travel, um, there, certain level of corporate travel. And Riyadh, a full service carrier, will have its objectives as well, but they will focus on a Riyadh hub. And I, I don't think it's a, it's a competition. It's more like the pie is increasing. The pie is increasing, and I don't think it's something that we, we should be concerned about at this stage. Okay, yeah. does it have a name yet? Does it have? A name yet? It's called Project Dakota for right now. I think the name will be announced very soon. Okay, sorry to labor the point here, but um, it has been said that this is going to be a rival to perhaps uh, uh, Qatar Airways or perhaps even mm -hmm. uh, an Emirates. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? Because what can this airline possibly offer that Saudi can't already? I think when we say uh, what can it offer, there's a lot to offer uh, that Saudi can also offer at the same time. But but it's not what it cannot offer. It's uh, it's focusing on a Riyadh market, which is very specific on growth targets, uh, very specific on uh, population, corporate, premium travel into and out of Riyadh. So uh, we understand there's a we understand what the objective is there, and uh, I don't see it as a competition right at this stage. No. Do we know when it's coming to market? I, I, we'd let them announce it. Okay. They, we'll let them announce it. <laughs> it yes. sounds like you know, but possibly can't say. Yeah, I can't okay. Speak on okay. Let's let's move down the line. Um, Fawaz, you're next. Um, with regards to uh, the year that we've seen in the shipping market, how are we faring? How are we doing? And I think most importantly as well, how are we? How are you changing the optics around? Um, the cruise market at the moment, because through uh, 2020, through the peak of COVID, I guess uh, cruising got a pretty bad rep. You know, these ships were seen as like petri dishes on the sea. How do you fix that? And how's the market looking in the year ahead? Yeah, so let me start by saying that, as Fahad mentioned, that uh, we execute on the vision. And I'm proud to say that we don't only execute on the vision. We can accelerate the vision whenever it's possible. And I think we did that and we demonstrated that in the cruise, uh, 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 the cruise industry in Saudi. So when we initially launched Cruise Saudi, the plans were that we're going to bring the first cruise passengers at a home port in 2023. And it was uh, supposed to be 5,000 passengers in the first year in 2023. We started cruising three years in advance in 2020. We already reached 50,000 passengers until now. So we have already way past the goal for 2023. And uh, this sort of comes back to your second question. I think we were, we were able to do that because of the successful public-private partnership with the government. The new government is very agile. It responds very well to the needs of the private sector. And that's the opportunity that we saw when we launched cruising in 2020. So when most of the countries wanted cruises to be as far away as possible from their shores, Saudi Arabia wanted them to come, and we developed one of the first uh, uh, COVID protocols. And I think that was the segue that gave the rest of the world the confidence that we can do cruising without that. We actually had uh, one uh, suspected COVID case in our first sailing, and I remember that everybody was watching that. I think Fahad was there as well on the ship. And within four hours of coming back, everybody disembarked the ship successfully and were sent home. And I think the rest of the world watched that, and that was the beginning of, okay, that we not only started cruising, but actually responded very well to, uh, to an issue or to a suspected case. And then, of course, we didn't have any vaccine, so it was a totally different uh, 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 environment. Going back to the first question on the ambition, uh, or going back to the ambitions, we want to be one of the top 10 cruise destinations in the world we will reach 1.3 million passengers by 2035. We will create 50,000 direct and indirect jobs um, in the Saudi economy. And uh, we will employ, or uh, we will uh, launch around five to six ports on the Red Sea by then. And how does Cruise Saudi fit into the overall Saudi Vision 2030 agenda? Because I know you were saying that in the early days when you were just getting started, there were a couple of issues there, but tell me about the long-term trajectory and as you build out the business over the next few years, what is ultimately the end goal? So there are three areas um, uh, as part of Vision 2030 where, where Cruise Saudi will contribute to. So the first thing is the number of visits, and I'll speak about that. The second area 
is the economic development of the country. And the third area is opening up the cultural uh, uh, sites to the rest of the world. So let's, let, let me start with the first one. Uh, we will contribute 1.3 million cruise passengers by 2030 to the local uh, visits. And uh, these, uh, by now we already have 50,000 cruise passengers annually that are coming. We received the first international cruise passenger last year in November. And up to today, we had north of 8,500 cru uh, global cruise passengers. Most of them were Europeans. And we expect to receive many more this year. Uh, so that's in the, um, in, in the number of visits part. We are, on the second aspect, on the economic development, as I mentioned, we're going to contribute 50,000 direct and indirect jobs to the Saudi economy. We, the economic um, value that the cruise industry will provide to the GDP will be around six billion US dollars by 2035. And uh, 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 the average cruiser spends around $100 um, at a home port, so that will also go back to the local economy. On, when it comes to the showcasing of cultural sites, we have six UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Three of them are accessible by cruising, and we already opened all three up for, for cruisers, so there is Jidda Historic Town, which is a beautiful site that uh, global tourists have already visited, and also there is Al-Ula, and there are other smaller towns that many global tourists have never heard of, like the, uh, the city of Yambor, uh, 300 kilometers north of Jeddah. It was the first time that it received global cruise passengers, and they just loved it. They loved going to Medina and uh, visit the local uh, uh, ladies. So, so STA has created a, a ladies of local uh, uh, local ladies network who take these cruisers to their houses and uh, show them some food and uh, show them the area. So I think all that was very important for us to opening up the culture of Saudi Arabia to the rest of the world. One thing that you and I were speaking about earlier before as well is how cruising is no longer just an activity for the over 65. And one thing that you're actually actively doing is trying to bring it down market in the sense that you're attracting a much younger demographic. So when it comes to uh, routes, experiences, destinations, what does the modern day cruise attendee actually want? So, so I think it all depends on the product. The, the luxury product in general is uh, mostly attuned to the 50, 55 plus market. And because it's expensive and it's more of a uh, experience-based cruising rather than having activity on the ship. I've been on a recent cruise ship of Celebrity Beyond. It was 18 plus and most of the audience or the customers were between uh, 30 to 45. What we saw in Saudi, that this average is coming down. So 50% uh, uh, or around 55% of the, of the passengers who came on board our cruising were below, below the age of 35. We had uh, families, they enjoy coming in cruising because they have all these activities. Also, the shore excursions cater to uh, many of these. We see a lot of uh, active shore excursions, a lot of hiking and adventures and diving and all that. So, so I think it all depends on the product that comes to a market and the activities that relate to these markets. And I think your target is 1 million passengers by 2028, is that correct? Yes. Uh, how do you get there? Uh, so, so I think that's not very hard for us to get there, given all the support that we get from all the, uh, the government agencies and our owner PIF. So uh, we've developed uh, four cruise ports right now that are ready to receive the largest cruise ships in the world. We have Jeddah, we have King Abdullah Economic City, and then we have Yambo, 300 kilometers north of Jeddah. And then way ahead of schedule, we have Dammam also ready, which will start cruising by the end of this year. So I think with these four ports, we're ready to achieve that number. Okay, I think it's a really interesting space. It's really, really interesting. Uh, Majed, welcome into the conversation. I have a couple of questions for you as well. Thanks. To begin though, Tell me what business units are showing momentum in 2022. What business units are showing momentum this year? And where will growth come from over the next few quarters? What are some of the trends that you're seeing? Okay, I just want to go back and explain how, how our visitor in Saudi Arabia used to come or win. We have a summer season, okay? And the majority of them who come to Umrah used to spend the whole time between Mecca and Medina, and he did not have that opportunity to visit any place in Saudi Arabia except view. 
We could, okay, with a new plan, okay, of new regulations come from SPA, and, and I'm sure Mr. Fahad hired a lot of things for new Umrah now, okay, because he's planning for something new now, as we know. Umrah will lead, will lead, Umrah visitor will lead big part for a visitor who will come to Saudi Arabia, because they're gonna see the new locations that they were not allowed to go and visit it. They will spend the, their visit to Mecca or Medina, our holy cities, and they will have opportunity to visit the other places, other city, and enjoy their stay in Saudi Arabia. Our work now to try to market and show and from that, I just say, in last ATM, we announced for our partnership with Fluke, and now will will be soon ready our marketplace for 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 all activities, and that that will help us to to, to offer for our client or whoever wanna use it the activities and opportunities and the places in Saudi Arabia they can visit it everywhere, all the time. Plus, we got opportunity with the seasons starting in Saudi Arabia. And we have, you know, um, I'll be honest and, you know, it's fact. We are in a contact with our team, okay? I can say team because they allow us to use everything there for supporting us in STA, and Ministry of Tourism, and you know, and you know, all Giga project now start and announcing that guys, you can have a great opportunity, a great place for your visitor who will come from outside or a domestic who will move, they can come and visit. So, when you when you have that opportunity, that all the tools and all the the, the you know help it come from the Saudi airline, they can help you to go to any place in Saudi Arabia, any corner, okay, with a daily, almost a daily flight, okay, with the, our regulator, he's allowing us to, to use their tools or they, they offer us to get a support. We are the first company who got a deal with Travel Development Fund okay, and the Ministry of Tourism to do a hotel now in one of the important places in Saudi Arabia, and we are under construction now. All these opportunities, all these tools, that it gives you, you know, hint that you are aligned with the government plan, you got the support, and you are in touch on a daily basis with them. Guys, we will start this season, this time, we need to focus here and there and there. And when you come back with any comments or something, they can, no, we can move here and there. Our work now, we are trying to work inside our groups, our companies. We develop, you know, we will be soon, inshallah, authentic company, okay? We are involving in the technology. We have our arm, Discover Saudi Arabia. It reach everywhere in, in Saudi Arabia. We have our arm for uh, Ajahn Umar, for Ma, Ma Awasim, and we got a great result in last month, Ramadan. It was unbelievable for me. I spent myself 20 years, and that's uh, actor. What happened this year it was like, you know, a sign, people thirsty, they wanna move, they wanna travel everywhere. And when you just, make everything ready for them. And they're gonna visit and revisit and revisit. Plus we have our big arm, the consumer travel, Musafir. Musafir is leading and our, I can say our market share is exceed 60% in travel in general in Saudi Arabia. That it help us to have a good position as a listed company, a big company, you know, or a big, Group of, group of companies who focus and work in travels with the support from the regulator, 
from the Ministry of Tourism, from the, our partner here. We have a good deal with the cruise, you know, the last two years, and we have a great relationship with Saudi Airlines. We cross a billion with them, even with other airlines. I can say we are, we are not smart if we did not catch that opportunity in this booming time. I think it's interesting as well because uh, over the past few years, public, the public perception of Saudi Arabia has changed for the better, uh, most definitely. And this is the question I asked uh, Fahad earlier on today when we were in uh, our interview on CNBC. Public perceptions are changing for the better, but there are still some out there who might have a negative perception of Saudi Arabia. So for those who might be considering traveling Saudi Arabia or even to our region for the first time, what can you do to challenge some of those negative perceptions and win the confidence of the international traveler? I just want to go back for three years and I can ask my friend here and there. Who did plan to come and visit Riyadh for a weekend or for three days? It never happened before if you have no relative in Riyadh. Correct. Okay, now Riyadh is attracting everybody. People who are staying in, in, in Jeddah or in Hobar, you know, in the beach, you know, beaches area, and, and they spend a weekend in Riyadh. That means we could, answering your question, we could attract people to come with the support from, from our regulator, our country. That, so we have an attractive that come from everywhere. Uh, our leader, in the end, you know, is, is, is trying to make the full transformation for the whole country. That our country is open. Our country has a lot of things or, it's, or, or, or I know places to visit. Uh, everybody now, you know, all I can say about uh, you know, attractive thing in, in, in our business, all restaurant is open, the cinema, the, the, the places for kids, for family, everything is available. So you can create your package. Just use a nice logo word, nice season. You change, you know, from season to season. Man, you're going to be busy 12 months. Um, Fawaz, Captain, did you also have a view on that? Did you want to maybe speak to what the global perception of Saudi Arabia yeah. is today, brand Saudi Arabia today, and how that's changing? You know, when we talk about brand Saudi Arabia and we talk about perception, I'm getting surprised when some of the things that I've heard. And I remember Fahad speaking at a previous event where we were talking about perceptions. Saudi Arabia is not desert. So you can see beautiful deserts and everything. But I got surprised when I hear that there's going to be ski resorts in the north of Saudi Arabia, when there's going to be, you know, the, up in the mountains uh, in Saudi Arabia. So it's a very vast terrain. It's not just the, the coast uh, on the Red Sea. It's not just there. So perceptions have to change of what Saudi Arabia really has to offer. It's a vast country. Uh, there's a lot of culture. There's a lot of history. And I think people are beginning to, to realize that Grand Saudi Arabia is a lot more than just the... Uh, perceptions there. There's, there's a lot that people are becoming aware of right now, and uh, I, I think we're going to capitalize on that going forward. Fawaz, you agree with that? I think from, uh, from my point of view, we first, have to, we first have to change our perception first before the rest of the world changes uh, theirs. So I remember when we were preparing for global cruise uh, passengers to come to Saudi, I went to visit a, a small town of Al-Waj, 600 kilometers north of Jeddah. And this was in the beginning of 2021, because we were preparing Al Wajh for, for the visits. And I asked my team to get me a local tour guide. When I went there, I was surprised to know it was a lady tour guide, local from Al Wajh. She was in her early 40s, and she spoke very good English. So I asked her, like, how do you know English? You're from Al Wajh. She said, when she went to study with, when she, when she was with her husband, who was studying in the US 20 years ago, that's where she learned English. And she has two, two boys who left al Waj to work in Riyadh and Jeddah. And she would love to bring them back uh, to work here. And I'm proud to say that she was there when the first cruise passengers arrived in, Nove in November of 2021 to take them around. And that was the highlight of the experience of these global cruisers. Because they saw a local Saudi lady who spoke really great English, and she had an ambition. She wanted to bring back her kids uh, to, to her city. And now she employs four other ladies who work with her from the local area to take them around. And then another example, uh, other ladies in Medina 
who also take these global cruise passengers to their homes and let them try the local food and show them the, uh, where the prophet has traveled and his companions and, and learn more about the religion and the local culture. So I think the perception changes once people step foot in Saudi Arabia. And I think uh, they just get surprised. They get surprised about the hospitality, how uh, nice and great people are. And this is what differentiates us from the rest of the region. We are a premium destination. We're unlike uh, the rest of the region where you know, people can compete on price. We don't compete on price. We compete on quality and the offering that a guest would get once they come to Saudi Arabia. Fahad said something interesting earlier before. He said, global competition is a regional play and Arabia's time has come. So let's talk about the dynamic between Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Millions of visitors come to the UAE each year because it has a very well-established tourism and um, domestic infrastructure uh, scene. Saudi Arabia is now investing to build that out and, and uh, create its own industry and create its own scene. Um, should this be viewed as a competition or a complement in the region? I guess similar to the question that I asked earlier, um, what, would be, what would be your message to the industry and the leadership here in the UAE as Saudi Arabia accelerates this very aggressive push into tourism? Would the UAE be worried? If I can touch on it briefly, um, when we look at growth of aviation travel for uh, worldwide, it's growing at about a 3% uh, annually. When we look at the region here in Saudi Arabia, or in, in Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, it's growing higher than uh, from here till 2030 and beyond, it's projected to grow much faster. So we're not talking about Saudi Arabia competing, it's the whole region growing. When we talk about the fleet size of uh, aircraft, and I'm looking at it from the airline perspective, uh, fleet sizes will more than double. I think it's close to two and a half to three times uh, commercial fleet will have to grow just to keep up with the demand for the Middle East in general. So GCC being the higher uh, growth rates over there uh, on fleet growth, uh, but it's also in, in the rest of the Middle East, whether we're talking about Egypt, like I had mentioned, or when we're talking about uh, parts of North Africa as well. So the Middle East is growing substantially. I don't think it's going to change destinations. I think we're complementing each other. I think we're changing Arabia, the Middle East into uh, a regional travel uh, area. And, and the air, from the airline's perspective, the success of our neighbors is, uh, is very important to us. I'm sure it's important if I, if I talk about Qatar Airways, it's important for them. If I talk about Emirates or Etihad or Saudi, seeing travel grow is, is a win-win for everybody. So I don't think we're, we're looking at uh, competing with each other. We're complementing each other going forward, Arabia as a, as a whole growing. Uh, Fawaz, did you want to speak to that as well? Yeah, I think along the same lines, when it comes to cruising, I don't believe in competition. As Fahad mentioned, the pie is big enough. We need to target, uh, we need to market uh, cruising here as a region. So I think it's, uh, uh, and it's not just one plus one would equal two, it's I think one plus one would equal three. This is the name of the game here. And I think uh, uh, we're doing this in the Red Sea. We've partnered with Egypt and Jordan to market Red Sea as a region, and this helps us uh, attract global cruise lines. And I think we're starting to do the same in the Arabian Gulf. We're working with Dubai ports and Abu Dhabi ports to market ourselves as a region. What we have to offer on the Arabian Gulf is very different than the rest of the other countries have to offer. We have the region's um, only uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Al Hassa, so the rest of the cruise lines are looking forward to come to Al Hassa. So. Having Saudi Arabia as part of that would actually increase the appeal of their product in the Arabian Gulf. And the same case is there in uh, uh, the Red Sea. And I think we're now working on a, a, a regional association when it comes to cruising to actually take this, take, take this to the next level. Okay. Um, and Abadjah, just with regards to the dynamic between Saudi Arabia and the UAE, if you are um, an international traveler, does it matter that the weekends are not aligned? The weekend looks different in Saudi Arabia compared to the weekend in the UAE. Is that a barrier? Even, even I'm, I'm going to disagree with my friends a little bit, okay? Even uh, half of me aligned with what they said. When you compete, that means you have to involve yourself 
upgrade yourself, fight for opportunity. The competition is not bad if, if it is right. I, I agree with the competition. If it is for, you know, trying to offer, you know, best service, you know, a better location, and if I go to call everything a competition, that Abu Dhabi is competing with Dubai when they did this and this, even in the same country. No, I can compete with uh, and fight w with my neighbors, with, with, with other destinations, even, even in Asia or Europe. If I can, I will compete, I will fight to get best opportunity and catch it. But, uh, you know, go, going back to your question, uh, the same culture between all the countries, uh, you know, in GCC, but we should offer and show and market what we have as an advantage or you know, our strength for all the world. So when they just plan and think for a visit, we'll, you know, we'll keep the opportunity open for them. He can go to Dubai and Riyadh, Dubai and Jeddah, or choose Riyadh and Jeddah and choose Dubai and Doha and Riyadh, you know, this is, you know, a plan in the end or a decision will be for the, the, the you know, uh, client, okay, but our job to show everything is ready for welcoming you and make your trip, you know, um, you know, one of the best. And we are uh, rapidly running out of time, so I just have one more question for each of you. And um, the question is really based around what's going to happen next. And when you look ahead, how do you raise the ambition from this point within your businesses and within the sector? And what else needs to be done to achieve the 2030 targets moving forward? Captain, I'll start with you. So when we look at what's beyond this from here till 2030 even, uh, we positioned ourselves in a way where we've secured financing for additional 73 aircraft, uh, that which is coming through for the Saudi group. Uh, we, we've invested heavily in a digital transformation because we know expectations are, are changing with our, for passengers. So uh, we know people want to be informed immediately with the apps. Uh, we're we know where, where we have gaps right now and we're addressing that all of this will be done within an 18 month period. Uh, at the same time, in-flight connectivity, in-flight entertainment, the product on board, the whole travel journey, getting it to a seamless experience is, is a very important uh, thing for, for us uh, going forward from here. So it's not just about the capacity, but it's the journey itself. And uh, I think it's also very important to understand that anybody booking uh, coming to visit Saudi Arabia, will, it'll be a seamless experience with, with the visa, for example. Uh, you make your booking online. Uh, it, I think it's been uh, something like 40 countries already added the list, no visa required, and, and then there, beyond that, uh, the simplified visa process. Your booking is your visa. It's, a simp it's going to be a very simplified uh, journey. So we're getting ready for that. That's really the way forward. There's a lot of investment in the, uh, in the digital transformation, and that's, that's part of what we're... I think for us, it's two areas. So it's number one, the cruise passengers. We want to become one of the top 10 cruising destinations in the world. And that will require a lot of uh, uh, investment in infrastructure and also in the shore excursion and the destinations. And I think uh, with the Giga projects and all the new uh, sites that are coming up, that will help us a lot in achieving those goals. On the second part is we actually, so we're just starting now, right now, and we want to redefine cruising at the global level. And we're yet to, uh, to start our first cruising product, but we just signed the first uh, cruise product, and it's going to be the world's most luxurious cruise line, or, or what we call a giga yacht. We've signed that with Amman uh, at the end of last year, and we're going to see the first ship at the end of 2025, and that's the first of many products to come. What we want to build is, uh, we want to become the largest luxury cruising platform in the world, and it's not going to be only in Saudi Arabia, it's going to be uh, running around the world, utilizing the niche products that we're going to have in Saudi Arabia. So I think in these two areas, we're going to reach um, and redefine cruising as we go forward. And Majed, I'll let you have the final yeah. thought, final say. I can say that we start, you know, for, for our plan since 2000, end of 2015, it was a full transformation, how we, you know, start in our group. And uh, all this happened for one reason that I can say it now. We want to be 
a technology company has a solution for a truffle and ground handling and the full needs for a truffle. And I can say, and uh, I can say it proudly that we will be within one year from now a full technology company. So all our arm, we could, okay, you know, do a lot of development for our arm and rent a car called Lumi. We have an application now and we're gonna start a shared services for a car soon. And this will be, you know, I can, you know, I hope that we can lead our market in the winter car. And then Musafa, our consumer travel company, we upgrade our service. We invest heavily in the technology for the last three years or more than three years. And now we have one of the best applications. We compete with the big name worldwide and we have our market share. Uh, I'm happy for it, but uh, we are a little bit in this corner, as I can say, greedy with the support we got from our regulator, from the countries, from the opportunity available on the table. We should compete and get more market share. For other, you know, uh, other arms in, 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 in our group, we are focusing in technology, and I'm repeating technology and technology because we we made our plan and roadmap to be a technology company who has the full solution for a traveler from home to home. Thank you. Majid, thank you so much. Thank and you. Fawaz, Ibrahim, thank you for your contribution today. Thank you for letting me take your question. Thank uh, you. Ask you questions. I appreciate it. And thank you all for sitting in to listen to our conversation this afternoon. Wishing you all the best for the rest of your conference experience. And with that, we'll pass it back over to our organizers.